Okay, so number one, how many edges are there in K sub 20? So if I have K sub 20, what is 20? 20 is your uh, vertices. 20 is your vertices. So you go, uh, what else do I need to do edges? Vertices. The degrees. The degrees. So if I have 20 vertices, 19. they each have a degree of 19. So divided by 2. So 20 times 19 gives me? Um, I said, do 20 times 19 first. So that gives you? Three eighty. Okay, so three eighty. We need to cut that in half. So there's a hundred and ninety edges. Okay. Okay. Number two says so how many distinct Hamilton circuits exist in K sub ten? So again, we've got K sub ten. What is ten? Vertices. Okay. What do I need to do Hamilton circuits, though? What was my formula? Uh, the degree. The degree. So if I have 10 vertices, they each have a degree of? Nine. nine. So Hamilton circuits, then, is nine factorial. I'm OK if you just leave it as that. If you actually gave me the answer, it was 362,880. Number three, how many vertices are in the graph of K sub 50? 50. Woo, yeah, it's all bad. Vertices are 50. What is the degree of every vertex in K sub 200? 199. Your degree is always one less. That means I have vertices of 200, which means they each have a degree of 199. How many distinct Hamilton circuits exist in K sub 22? Before I can do circuits, I need degree. So before I can do degree, I need vertex. So how many vertices do I have? I have 22, which means I have what for degree? 21, which means my Hamilton circuits are 21 factorial, which comes out to be like 5.10909 e to the 19th. Can we test? Can we just give you the factorial? I'm okay with that, yes. Because one point, that big old thing, what was it? One point, I'm sorry, 5.10 e to the 19th means I move my decimal 19 spaces to the right. It's scientific notation. So your number's huge. Your calculator won't give it to you. Okay. That's what that means. How many edges are there in K sub 32? If I've got K sub 32, how many vertices do I have? 32, which means how many degrees do I have? 31, good. Which means to find my edges, 32 times 31 divided by 2. What does that give me? 196. What is the degree of every vertex in K sub 15? Oh, uh, 14. 14. That means I have 15 vertices, which means my degree is 14. And finally, if K sub N has 120 distinct Hamilton circuits, what is N? Okay, this is the one where you had to work backwards. Normally factorial. Again, we start at the highest number and we multiply. So now I'm going to start at the lowest number and I'm going to divide. So 120 divided by 2. 60. Divided by 3. Uh, 20. 20. Divided by 4. Five. Here's where I stop. I divided by four. My next number up is five. Five represents your degree. Okay, that's your degree. You can always check yourself. Five factorial is 120. 
Okay, so if my degree is five, they want to know what is N? What does N represent? What word is associated with N? Vertices. So if I have a degree of five, I have six. I have six. Okay. Okay. Number nine. If K sub N has 55 edges, what is N? This is the one where you had to work backwards. All right. I'm not playing this game anymore. Everybody that's falling asleep is going to stand up and take notes. Devin, up. Come on. Come on. If we cannot stay awake, you will stand and take your notes. I'm done with the sleeping stuff in here. It's not happening. Okay, so my edges, we said was vertices times degree divided by two. So we need to set this up and work it backwards. So 55 equals V times D divided by two. Oh, okay. So I need B and D by itself. So you multiply by two. I multiply both sides by two. So 110 equals B times D. So I need two numbers side by side that multiply to give me 110. 11 and 10. 11 and 10. So 11 is your vertice, 10 is your degree. So which one are they actually looking for when it says what is N? 11. They want your vertices. Okay. They want your vertices. Number 10 says the number of edges of K sub 12 is X and the number of edges in K sub 13 is Y. Find the values of Y minus X. So first I need to find the edges for both. Okay. So if I have K sub 12, how do I find the edges? Vertices, which is 12 times 11 divided by 2 gives me what? It's a 60. I got a 66. Okay, 66. So then K sub 13, I need to do 13 times 12 divided by 2. Seventy-eight. And then I need to subtract the two. So 78 minus 66 gives me 12. Number 11, K sub N has 5,040 distinct Hamilton circuits. Does anybody remember what number factorialized gives me 5040? Some of these will start to stick in your head and you'll automatically be able to tell me what number it is. Anybody? Anybody stick in their heads? Okay, we can work it, it's fine. Divided by two starts me where? Twenty-five twenty divided by three. Eight forty divided by four. Divided by five. Divided by six. Seven. So seven degrees. Okay, which means eight vertices. The number of edges, remember we go back to this. So we've got 66 edges and that equals vertices times degree divided by two. So my first step is to multiply both sides by two. So vertices times degree equals 132. So I need two numbers that are going to multiply together that are side by side that gives me 132. 
12 and 11. So they're looking for 12. Okay, you would do the same thing with C. I'm going to skip C. Okay. Number 12 should have been really easy considering you got that answer when you did number two. Okay, number two said we had K sub 10. How many distinct Hamilton circuits did we have? So, how many vertices would I have then if this is K sub 10? 10. 10. What's the degree of the vertex? Nine. Nine. And how many edges? Um, it would be what times ten what? Times, uh, 10 times nine, nine divided by two. Uh, 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 Whoa. You are 45, my friend. 45. Question. We got to talk about Homer Simpson. Homer Crazy Simpson. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, they still do like marathons of the Simpsons. I don't think they're actually coming up with anything new anymore. I think the new stuff's over. All right. So, section 6.3 traveling salesman problems. Yes, it's exactly what you think. You're now going to be a salesman and you're going to go door to door and sell your products. And you're a lazy salesman. Okay? So you want to do it in the fastest manner possible. So in order to do that, we need to introduce what we call a weighted graph. Any graph whose edges have numbers associated or assigned. Spell today. Okay. So now with your pretty graphs, with all these vertices and all of these edges, we're now going to put numbers. It's back. Gotta throw numbers in there somewhere, right? Hey, sunshine. I wasn't efficient. I already have the other page. <laughs> we on a new one. Okay. Your weights are the numbers for each edge. Okay. Why would we throw numbers there? Well, they can represent the distance between the places. They can also represent the time it takes to get from place to place. We could even do the cost of gas that gets you from place to place. Okay, so your numbers have a purpose. It can be the blocks in between the houses. They can between, it can be the miles between the cities. They can be the time it takes to take the airplane from St. Louis to Pittsburgh. Okay, it can represent whatever you want it to be. A complete weighted graph is a complete graph that has weights associated with it. So our goal for the rest of this chapter is to find the cheapest, most efficient, optimal route. Okay. So we start with Homer. Okay. How many of you have actually watched The Simpsons? Me. Okay. So you know Homer. Homer's the crazy guy. He's they got the quickie mark that's our super science okay. He always has to go visit grandpa at the old folks home because, you know, grandpa can't take care of himself anymore. And then he swings by Moe's for his favorite say. beverages. Okay. So, A is Homer's home. Okay. That's where he starts at and that's where he wants to go back to. So, if Homer prefers going to see Grandpa first, 
So when he leaves home, he's got to go to the retirement home to see grandpa. He still has to stop at Moe's and the Quickie Mart before he goes back home. We need to try to find the fastest way to do that. So Homer's going to leave A and go to B. It has to happen. He's got to go to grandpa first, according to my problem. Okay? From grandpa, where do you want to go? To C. We're going to travel this way. To C. He has to stop at every place before he goes back home. So from the quickie mart, he's swinging by Moe's to get himself a nice cold one. Okay. From Moe's, he's going to stagger on back home. Okay. So when he travels that, when he goes to the retirement home, he's gone 12 blocks. When he goes from the retirement home to the quickie mart, He's gone 20 blocks. He's walked 17 blocks to Moe's and eight blocks home. How far did Homer travel? Isn't this like this placement? Isn't this what? Like this placement. Kind of. Okay. So he's traveled 12, then 20, then 17, then eight. How far? You got what? 32, 32, 6, 40. 57. 57? Oh, what? Oh, you added it? Okay. Oh, okay. And he's walked 12 blocks plus 20 blocks plus 17 blocks plus 8 blocks. He's walked 57. Is that the only way to go to grandpa, visit grandpa first? No. No. He could have gone to see grandpa first, so A to B, and then he could have went and got his cold horn before he went to the store. Okay, so he's going to go to Moe's this time instead. And then he's going to go to the Quickie Mart. And then he's going to go home. So this time he's traveled 12 blocks, plus 15, plus 17, plus 20. That's 64. Okay. Well, everybody knows Homer's lazy. Homer doesn't want to do all that exercise. So which way would Homer prefer to go? He still has to travel all that. Which way would Homer prefer? The first one. He's going to take the shortest route, 57. Okay? For the next one, this time it says he wants to go to the Quickie Mart last. He wants to stop at the Quickie Mart, get himself some food. That's going to be his last stop. So what ways can Homer go from home to go to the Quickie Mart last? A, B, C. A, D, B, C. And back to A. So he went, whoops, I drew the wrong line. A to D to B, to C, and back to A. So that's 8, and 15, and 20, and 20. Sixty-three. Okay, that took him 63 blocks. Is there another way he could have gone instead? Remember, we want quickie mark last. A, B, D, C. A, B, D, C, and back to A. So A, B, D, C, and back to A. If you notice, we already did that in the last one. It matches. So that's 64. So if you wanted to go to the quickie mark last, which one would you prefer? The first one. The first one. He's going to take that block of 64. <laughs> So, our job is to come up with these short ways to do this, okay? So, of course, the genius mathematicians that they are have come up with what they call algorithms, okay? An algorithm is just a way to do something. Please don't let it confuse you, okay? So, the first way that they said that we can do all this is we can use what they call the brute force algorithm. 
Okay. Brute force. Another word for that is called the exhaustive search. Why do they call it that? Well, we're going to make a list of all the stink channels and circuits. So every circuit you can think of, we've got a list. Okay. So if I have a graph, a complete graph with four vertices, how many distinct Hamilton circuits should I have? What do I need before I do Hamilton circuits? Four degree. Degree. So if I have four vertices, my degree is three. And we need to factorialize it. Well, what's three factorial? Six. Six. So I'm going to have six ways to do this. Okay, so we need to come up with all six ways. So here's your first one. We're going to go from A to B, to C, to D, and back to A. So we went down, around, and back to A. If I go in reverse, it's going to be the same. A, D, C, B, and back to A. So that's two of them. This one, we traveled 13 plus 9 plus 14 plus 15. How far did we travel? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Okay. Fifty-one. Somebody give me another way to travel. Every point. Go get breakfast. Go get breakfast. So does that mean we're going from A to B? that breakfast? All right. A to B. I don't want to travel the same way we just did. D, C. So we have to go D, C, and back to A. A, B, D, C, and back to A, which means A, C, D, B, and back to A. Okay. Whether I go forward or backwards, they have the same weight. So this time we went 13, 16, 14, and 12. What's that get? 55. 55. I should have one more way. What's the only way we have not gone yet? Uh, A, C, D, A. A, C, B, D. Yes. Okay. A, C, B, D, and back to A which means A, D, B, C, and back to A. A to C to B to D and back to A. So this time we've traveled 12 plus 9, 16, and 15. Got all six. We said we had six. There's six up there. Okay. After you complete brute force, you need to pick your cheapest way, which would be what? A, B, C, D. Okay. That would be either A, B, C, D, A or A, D, C, B, A. Okay. You could have wrote it either way. So we've got some things that are great about this algorithm. First off, you always end up with the optimal route. You always find the shortest route because you list everything. Okay. The problem with this one, what if I had seven vertices? What's that mean for my degree? Six. And what's six factorial? Seven twenty. Uh, seven hundred and twenty. Who's got time to write seven hundred and twenty different ways to do this? Nuts. Okay. No, not even Miss Smith. Miss Smith don't even have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. Why do you make this mess? So, brute force is wonderful, but sucks all at the same time. Okay. So they said, forget it then. 
we're going to try something else. Okay. Strategy number two. I need to redraw this graph because I totally didn't put it on here when I made the slide. So give me one second. Whoop, whoop. That went A to D to C to B. We got 15, 13, 12, 16, 14, and 9. Okay. So. They came through and said, brute force is too hard. If we've got too many, it just can't be done. That's insane. So we're going to do something called the nearest neighbor. Okay. When we do nearest neighbor, we're starting wherever they tell us to. So this one says we need to start at A. Okay. Our goal is to visit the closest neighbor until we've visited everybody and then gone back home. So my neighbors from A, I can take a stroll of 13 to B. 12 to go to C, or 15 to go to D. What's my nearest neighbor? 12. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on over here to C. Okay, so we're going A to C. We said that's 12. Okay. My next nearest neighbor, I've got to visit everybody. So I started at home. I went to visit Carol. Okay, that's Carol. Okay, so now. I either need to go to the left and visit Brian, or I need to go up and visit Dan. Okay, so we go into Brian or Dan next. Brian. Brian. We can either travel 9 to Brian or 14 to Dan. We're going to go to the nearest one. So we're going to go see our dear old friend Brian. So I'm going to add 9. Well, before I go home, I need to visit all my neighbors. So I'm going to travel on up and say hello to Dan. From Dan's house, I got to go back home. So that's back to A, and that's 15. How much is that? 52. 52. So this method is great. Super easy. Super short. Mm -hmm. We're just going to visit our very, very friendly people. Okay, what's the flaw? Okay. The flaw is, what was our answer on the last slide? Go ahead. 51. Oh. I was 51 was our shortest route. Did this give me my shortest route? No. So while this is easy, it's not optimal. Okay. Every time we go, we take one off. No, it doesn't work that way. I wish I could tell you that, but it doesn't work that way. Okay. All right. So. Some other things we can do in this chapter. I can take your graph and I can make it into a table. Okay, because some people are going to prefer a table over a graph. Okay, so one thing that we said that a complete graph does not have are loops. Okay, so if I don't have loops, I can't go from A and go back to A. So A to A is not going to exist on a table because I don't have any loops. B to B is also not going to exist. C to C is not going to exist. And D to D is not going to exist. Okay, there's no loops. It's really as easy as this. So my first block is row A, column B. So from A to B should be a 12. So, what's the difference if I go from A to B or B to A? What's the difference if I go from A to B or B to A? Nothing. It's still 12 blocks or 12 miles, so this is also a 12. Okay. My next one, row A, column C. So, A to C is a 20. And again, it's no different if I go from A to C or C to A. So this is also 20. Finally, A also leads to D, and A to D is an 8. A to D is the same as D to A, so this is also an 8. If 
we look at my next set of blocks, B and C. So B to C is 20. C to B, also 20. Okay, B to D, 15, which means this is also 15. And finally, 17 fills in C to D, which will also fill it in here. So, some observations. No diagonal. Because we have no loops. Okay. No diagonal, because I have no loops. Okay. What else do you notice? What if I drew a line down here like it's a line of reflection? If I would take these numbers the and graph. it's the same thing, okay? It's just in reverse. Okay? It's the same thing, it's just in reverse. So that diagonal you cross out is kind of like a line of reflection, okay? All right. I can also take a chart and make it into a graph, okay? So, we're going to label these A, B, C, D, and E. I need to travel from A to every point. So, I need to travel from A to B. That takes how long? Three. Three. I need to travel from A to C. Four. Four. I need to travel from A to D. Five. And A to E. Okay, so we did all of this. Okay, guess what? I don't have to do it in reverse, so I can also leave that alone. I now need to travel from B to everywhere. So B can go to C, which is five. B goes to D, which is seven. And B goes across to E, which is nine. So we did these ones. Again, I don't have to do the reflection. I want to go from C to D, which is 6, and C to E, which is 8, and E to D, which is 1. Okay. Okay. So some people prefer the chart. That's totally me. I get way too confused with all the lines, especially when you see this next example we're about to do and all the numbers. It's like, what number goes with what line? Ha, ha, what? Okay, so I don't care which way you're going to use. I'm going to show you how to use the chart as well as the graph. You pick what you want, okay? So find the nearest neighbor starting at D. So I want to start here. If I start at D, who is my nearest neighbor? Okay, my nearest neighbor is E. So again, you can use this. Or you can use this. So if you use this, we're at D. Okay, my smallest number in this row is a 1. Okay, so that takes me up to E. Okay, so now I'm at E. Okay, I have to go to every place. So I can either go to A, to B, or to C. I can't go to D. So if I go to A, it's 6, B, it's 9, C, it's 8. So I'm going to go to A. That's 6. Okay. From A, I only have B and C to go to. So do I want to go to B or C? I want to go to B. And I have to go from B to C, which is five. Don't forget to go back home, okay? Don't forget to go back home, which is C to D, which is six. So we went to E, to A, to B, to C, and back to D, okay? so. You can either look at the graph at this point and add up all the numbers or add up all the numbers that you circled in the chart. 
Okay, I don't care which way you use. Again, I prefer the chart. That's just me. The way my brain works. I don't like to go. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this gives us a length of one T one. One one. So this is one plus six plus three plus five plus six. Okay. One T one. This is our last example for today. You ready for it? No. Oh. Here's your chart. Oh. Here's your graph. I like it more. Which one would you like me to do first? From the graph or from the chart? The graph. You want me to do the graph first? We can do the graph first. Okay. So, number one. Number one says, does brute force seem practical here? No. How many would I have to do if I did brute force? A lot. 720. 720. My degree here is six, which means I would have to list out 720. Be nuts if you try to do that. Good luck. Okay, so we're going to use nearest neighbor. And it says I need to start at A. So when I go to nearest neighbor, I can either travel to B, which is 75, C is 50, D is 28, E is 35, F is 15, G is 22. Who's my nearest neighbor? F. F. <laughs> Small city. Okay, so now I'm in F. I need to visit all of these other places. So I can either go to G with 13. Yeah, you can go to G. You said G's next. Yeah. Go to G. E is 40, F. D is 30, 35, 65. Yes, we are going to G. We go to F. So, numbers on one spot. You already went to F. You just went to F. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you went to F, then to G. Now I'm at G. This is why I don't like the graph, because there's so many lines and numbers. You're like, what, what does, what could it look Okay, so from here, I can either go 32, 29, 28, or 50. Zoe said, let's go to C. I agree. That's 28. Okay, so now I can either go to B at 30, I can travel down to E, which is 48, or D, which is 40. I'm going to B. And then go to D. Okay. Then he said D and then E, because D was 60, E was 80, so I need to travel down to D. And then I have to go to E before I go home, and then I've got to go the whole way back home. So we went to C, where am I at? C, C to B, B to D, D to E, and E back to A. So we've got 15, 13, 28, 30, 60, 20, and 35. 501. 501. 501. Oh, I missed those. I got 201. Yeah, I missed those. Okay. So 201. Who's walking or driving that long? Some crazy, crazy, crazy people. Just call them. Say, have you ever lived in like a? Well, I can't really say. Have you lived in a place like Texas? Where it's wide and open? No, I can't. I can't say that. Okay. So what I want you to try. She just said, "Bro, no." Because I'm about to pull up some homework here. Oh, man. Okay. If you go to assignments, there's a 6.4, 6.5 worksheet. Is it for us? Okay. So, there's five graphs. Okay. Listen. If you can handle doing nearest neighbor, 
starting at A for each one of those. I can accept that. Okay, right. nearest neighbor. So five problems, nearest neighbor, start at A. That's it. Okay, no brute force. I'll take it.